Hi, everyone, and thank you, Jane. I really appreciate the chance I've had to go back and relive some special memories that were inspired by Mother Grief. I've been involved in children's literacy for 30 years as a teacher and a librarian, and I'm always grateful for any moment when I see a child connecting with a book. Finding the right book is the first step. Finding ways to keep a child reading is the second step. So in 2006, our library started a program called Stars with Dogs, Sit Together and Read Stories with Dogs, with reading buddies from Champ Therapy Dogs. I loved seeing the interactions between the readers and the dogs. The unconditional love flowed both ways, and it was so rewarding to see the bonds that grew between the readers and Norm and Shoto and Socrates, our first therapy dogs. And some of those dogs were rescue dogs brought into the therapy program. We'd set the foundation for working with therapy dogs in the library. I just didn't dream how much I, we could accomplish. With a nod to my favorite author, and for the librarians in the group, you're gonna know who I'm talking about, uh, Rick Riordan. Oh, I just took, some, hold on. <laughs> okay. um, I have to say that the gods and goddesses of literacy were with me all the way, and they gave me all the help I needed to create some of the most memorable and magical moments of my career. Nestle Purina, St. Louis Corporation, uh, contacted librarians and, in Illinois and Missouri and offered training in a social emotional curriculum called Mud Agrees. They had my attention and I was excited to get started and participate in the training as well as receive the Mud Agrees curriculum. And hold on just a minute, for some reason, my, my page is not moving. Okay. Okay, best laid plans here. I'm a lifelong reader and an animal lover, so I couldn't find anything not to love about Mudagree. So we integrated the program immediately into our library programs and into the local school district as much as they would have us. Okay, I'm not working here. Okay. And I've got a dog groaning in the background because he wants inside, so. Sorry about that. One of these Zoom moments, okay. I knew the kids and dogs reading together was a win-win for everyone. So if therapy dogs worked in the library, why wouldn't they work for incarcerated underserved teens? Which leads me to a surprising story of how social emotional learning can happen in the most unexpected places. You just have to be open to the possibilities and give them a push in the right direction. But first, a little more background. We've been working with uh, the Madison County Juvenile Detention Center since 2009. So the center's administrators were accustomed to us and they trusted us to offer positive programs that promoted positive learning experiences. We'd also been partnering with the detention center and received books from the American Library Association's Great Stories Club. The books offered during each grant cycle were curated for underserved and at-risk teens and featured a variety of themes and authors that were relevant to the readers. We held monthly book talks during the years that we received the grant and considered the program as successful. The center's teachers really liked the books. The students participated in them, they would read the books, and then we'd all get together in a room in a circle and share our thoughts and feelings. It was successful, but it felt like there was something missing. And it was like, what else can we do? We brought them treats, we did all these things for them, but it, they just, they didn't wanna let their guard down. They're kids in a detention center. They're, you know, they're lonely, they're, oops, there I am. Um, they're lonely, they're afraid, they're all these things. And I kept trying to figure out what, what can I bring in? What more can I do? And I figured out I needed a unicorn. Now everybody knows that unicorns are real. In this case, this was real. I had a unicorn that walked into my library one day. Uh, it was, I gotta, I gotta say, I was a little unsettled when I saw him. This is massive German shepherd named Titan. He and his dog dad, Alex, walked through the library towards my office and I thought, what could they possibly want? Because we'd been doing therapy dog training or uh, therapy dog programs for a long time, but I'd never had a dog that big. So he walked up and explained that they were part of a group called Got Your Six Therapy Dogs. Now, Got Your Six is a service dog 
training group. That is their first priority to provide service dogs to first responders and uh, military people who need uh, service dogs. But they also do have a therapy dog unit that visits schools and libraries and nursing homes. And it took me about a hot second to figure out that I had a whole pack of unicorns just waiting to join me at the detention center. I contacted the program director at the center and said, hey, what about this? And he fortunately was very agreeable to it. So we entered into a totally different level of book talks. The first time, and Jane can attest to this, and I'm gonna ask her to share her response to the meeting that she uh, attended in a minute. But the first time those dogs came into the room, it was like someone lit a light bulb. The kids were, instead of sitting there kind of sullen and unwilling to really stick their, you know, stick their necks out and give any responses or talk about the books at all, they couldn't wait to share. These, these stories were Walter Dean Meyer books. They're books that spoke to them, but they were afraid to share what they felt about them. So instead of having the regular book talk where we were sitting in a circle, me, a lot of kids in orange jumpsuits and some teachers, we had dogs and their caregivers interspersed in the circle. And it was like the floodgates opened. It was truly, and we've talked about this before, Jane and I, it was truly miraculous. I have never seen a change in a whole group of, of kids, teens. We're not talking about fun teens. We're talking about teens who are in the detention center for a reason. But each one of them opened up and shared their experiences. Was it scary? Yeah. Now, it took me a little while to get used to being locked behind three closed doors, but it was well worth the attention. The, the kids, the students, and the dogs were like, they were just, there was an emotional bond there that you, you couldn't reproduce, not even in a movie. Let's share the, I just want to share a picture of us outside the detention center when we were, were there. That's our that's team. There they are. Yep, that's the team. It, even after our book talks ended, uh, because we no longer had the grants from ALA, this group of uh, dogs continued to go on Sundays to visit these students, and they were allowed to go out into the exercise yard under staff supervision, and the uh, pet caregivers taught the kids how to train the dogs and how to exercise the dogs, so they continued with that program even after the book talk stopped, and the only thing that stopped them was COVID. Yeah. So I'm hoping that someday that I'm going to hear that my unicorns are back in the city. So hello, everybody. My name is Kristen. Um, I've been a youth and teen services librarian at Middle Country for about 11 years. And eight of those years, I have been um, doing Mud Degrees programming. Um, Middle Country was a very natural fit for Mud Degrees because we are inherently a, a super animal friendly institution. Um, we were already hosting a number of animal related programs for years. Um, I'll get into more of them in detail later. Um, but just to give you an idea, 2021 will be our 19th year of having our annual pet parade. Um, next year will be our 13th year of our Scales and Tails Pet Education and Adoption Fair. And we've been doing canine reading as a staple program for about 15 years. Um, so we're definitely no stranger to animal programs. Um, and then just for fun, just, um, just among the staff, we also host um, annual dog ice cream socials where we come in after close on a Saturday when we close at five o'clock we all bring in our dogs and we hang out outside and we eat ice cream and everyone just hangs out and gets to know each other you know on another level so needless to say we're very big animal lovers here um, and throughout all those years and all those programs you know we really got to see how animals have a very unique power to bond people and, um, you know, really of all ages. So um, having seen the success of that, when our former director was contacted from about Mud Degrees, um, we were very quick to, you know, to sign on to partner with them. And we actually became the national pilot site for the Mud Degrees in the Library program in March of 2013. So on this slide here, um, you can see on the left side is the flyer for the kickoff event 
So uh, North Shore Animal League joined us at our library. You can see in the middle there, they brought their um, adoption van with, with all puppies. So it was awesome. We had dogs running all over the library, which was amazing. People love that. Um, we also had our therapy dogs join us. We did um, a doggy clinic. So um, you can see the little girl with the stethoscope on the right side there. So what we did was we had stuffed animals. Um, we invited kids to bring their own and we also had some and we had stethoscopes and band-aids and ace bandages and the kids were able to kind of play little veterinarians and work at the doggy clinic. Uh, we had face painting, we had the mudigree puppet that the kids were able to make as well as little, um, little doggy ears they can make. That's what those girls are doing there. Um, and then we also had cat toys that they made and we later donated to um, one of our shelters. Um, so the kickoff was a really big success. And then from then on, we had at least four programs every quarter that were under our mud degrees heading, um, which were mostly things taken from the curriculum. Some things, you know, we had to modify a little bit um, to meet, you know, our specific needs. But um, from there on, we had a number of programs every year. Okay, you can move on, sorry. <laughs> Um, so one of the first things that we did was to get our Mudigree's reading area. Um, so on the left side there, you can see that is um, our spotlight collection of all of our Mudigree's books. So we pulled books that we already had from our picture books collection, our nonfiction, our fiction, our easy readers, um, and we gave them a special label to designate um, our new collection. So we, read, we changed the pictures up on that display to coincide with whatever um, Mudigree's programs we're offering. I think those are from one of our pet parades. Um, and then you see there's a binder there with a paw print. That's actually one of our um, Adopt-A-Pet scrapbooks. So regularly, one of our teen volunteer clubs, which I'll talk about later, they print out pictures of the dogs from our local shelter and kind of make like a scrapbook kind of format out of it. And that's up there all the time for people to just look through and see all the adoptable pets that are in our area. So all those books are, um, like I said, a mixture of fiction and nonfiction, um, all promoting you know, social and emotional growth and, and empathy with toward animals. Um, and then our, oh, I'm sorry, go back one second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then the Mudigree Puppet, um, is another part, another tenant of the Mudigrees in the library. Um, in the beginning, we kind of had our puppet sitting on our display case and, you know, cause we wanted the kids to take him and play with him, but then he kind of wound up going all over creation. So we made him into, uh, we made it a kit so the kids can check out that whole backpack. And inside the backpack is the puppet, um, a couple of little hand puppets, some books, um, a folder with reproducible materials that are from the curriculum. And then we also included a marble notebook so that the kids can kind of chronicle their adventures with the Mudigree puppet while they have him. So for the week that they check him out, they can kind of write down, you know, what they did with him and, and the little adventures that they had together. Okay, sorry, now you can move on. <laughs> All right, so um, as I said earlier, um, animal programs definitely aren't new to us, but we, we did step things up when we you know, became a, a Mudigree's library. So these are some photos of one of our pet parades. We hold them every spring. Um, we're very lucky at, at Middle Country to have an outdoor nature explorium area. Um, but before the nature explorium was built, we, we were doing the parade in the parking lot. So it's definitely very adaptable to do this type of thing, no matter what kind of a space that you're working with. Um, but pretty much the parade um, just has families just come to the library with their pets. Um, they're able to kind of parade around. We play music, like marching music, patriotic stuff. Um, everybody gets a turn to go up on the stage. They can introduce their pets, say why they're special, if the animal does any tricks. Sometimes they bring them in costumes, so they want to, you know, show off their costumes and stuff. Um, and everybody gets a participation ribbon. So we give a little ribbon for the dogs for their collars and for all the kids and families that come. Um, another event that we do yearly is our Scales and Tails Pet Education and Adoption Fair. Um, like I said, we've been doing this one for over 10 years. Um, we hold it on the first Saturday of November. 
Um, we usually have anywhere between 20 and 30 exhibitors that come. Uh, they just take over the entire library. We move bookshelves, clear pretty much as much space as we can. Um, and as you can see, we don't have just dogs and cats. That's why it's called scales and tails. We have lizards, we have birds. Um, this year, as you can see in the bottom picture, we had a pig rescue come through. Um, so all the groups are nonprofit, most rescue organizations specializing in cats and dogs. Um, and they bring their adoptable animals. We have tons of successful adoption stories from this fair. So it really is a wonderful thing. Lots and lots of staff members have gotten their pets from our, our uh, pet fair throughout the years. Um, on the left side on the bottom, that's some of our therapy dogs. Those are our regulars that are here all the time. And I, I miss them terribly in the past year and a half. I, I hope they're all doing okay. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing event. Um, not everyone brings a, adoptable animals. We have other people that come just for educational purposes like the ASPCA. Um, and even some of the rescues don't bring their animals down but they just wanna come and have a presence and you know, just let people know that you know we're in the community and we're, we're here. Um, everyone that attends the fair goes home with several boxes of donations that our teen volunteers collect over the months that are leading up to the fair. Since you know the library is a nonprofit organization, we're you know they're not allowed to solicit for donations on library property, unfortunately. So in order to give them something for coming, we hold several donation drives so that people so that they're able to go home with you know a couple of bags of dog food, cat food, um, towels, all kinds of things. I'll kind of get into that a little bit more later. Our teen volunteers help with that. Question with the pet parade: How do you keep it from becoming chaotic? Um, well, people, we do, it is a registered event, so we do limit the amount of, of people that come. Um, and we do also have a separate entrance, although people are invited to bring their animals through the library. We do tell them that they do need to be leashed or caged, um, and everyone is responsible for picking up after their pet, as far as, you know, waste and things like that go. But really, we've never had a problem. People are very, you know, they really are. They're very respectful. They're just excited to be able to bring them in there. Um, but I think we probably are a little more easygoing seeing as how we've been doing events like this, as far as like having people bring their animals in and out of the library. Um, but we do write out those stipulations ahead of time as far as registering and everyone being leashed and, and whatnot. Um, okay, so like I said, canine reading, we've been doing for a long time, and I know this is probably one of the programs that a lot of um, you guys have probably done as well, so I won't go too far into it, um, but mostly our um, volunteers come from Canine Companions and Therapy Dogs International, um, and like I said before, they've become like a family to us. The handlers, we, we email with them, we talk to them, we know, their, we know about their kids and their grandkids and their lives. They're absolutely wonderful people. Um, so basically how the program works is that kids can sign up for a 15 minute time slot and then they'll choose from any book in the library or we do provide a card of books to narrow it down if they need and they can sit with that dog for 15 minutes and read to them. Um, at the end of their session, all of our handlers have bookmarks that we create for them with a picture of their dog and it says, I read to so-and-so. So the child is able to take that little bookmark with them with the picture of the dog. Um, several of the handlers that volunteer for us are disabled and the dogs that they bring with them are their actual real life service dogs. So that has also been a wonderful thing. Um, you know, it's not only fostering reading confidence, but kids are able to, you know, kind of be educated on disabled people and how these dogs actually do help them, you know, in their day to day lives. So there's, a, you know, a lot of a lot of respect and empathy and it's just a wonderful thing on all many levels it goes way beyond the reading all right so my absolute favorite is our mutts in a movie this is another one we've been doing probably for about six years um so pretty much what it is is um bringing your dog down to the library for an outdoor movie um we rent one of the large blow up screens. Again, we do this in our outdoor nature explorium, um, but could easily be transferred into a parking lot. So our patrons register and they come with blankets and chairs. We provide popcorn and we show a movie that, you know, is a, an animal related. We've done 101 Dalmatians, Secret Life of Pets, uh, Homeward Bound. 
which if you haven't seen in a while is a horrible tearjerker. So <laughs> just beware. Um, but this is an awesome program. Um, people just absolutely love this. It's very different and it's, you know, but at the same time, it's very easy. It's a very easy thing to do. Um, we also always have little kind of activities scattered around um, on the top left hand corner. Those are bandanas that we provide fabric markers and they're able to make a bandana for their dog. Um, and in the middle one, you see that that's uh, with Liam there, my little friend. Um, they are also able to make um, little poop bag holders with duct tape, which is another very easy project if you, uh, you know, ever wanted to make those. Um, so like I said, just things that they can do if, you know, their kids don't sit still or their dogs don't sit still. All right, so um, another thing that we got heavily into when we became a Muddigrees Library was kind of connecting with the people in our community. Um, we had a lot of, uh, you know, connections before, but we definitely kind of grew more collaborations with the police department and all kinds of other, other people in the community that we really didn't think of before. Um, so on that left side on the top, that is our local sheriff's department. They actually came down and did a uh, canine demo with one of their canine dogs, which was amazing. Um, it's actually a little scary at points, but it was incredible. And they kind of talked about how they train the dogs and how they, you know, got them from Germany. Very, very interesting. Um, underneath there, that's uh, Unchanged New York. And they came to talk to the kids about their rescue efforts. In the middle is the New York Bully Crew. And they specialize in pit bulls and you know all the unique challenges that come with pit bulls, which again, a very important thing to teach because you know, as you I'm sure you all know, there's a lot of sad um, you know untruths that go with those with them. Um, and then on the right side um, is someone from TDI, which is Therapy Dogs International, and she came to speak more in length about how her dog went through the the process of being trained as a therapy dog. Um, in addition to these places, we've also had local rescues, vet offices, um, sanctuaries. Um, you'd be surprised how many people, if you just kind of cold call around, are willing to come and talk to kids about what they do with animals. Um, also, being able to take the kids out, we've done tours of the Guide Dog Foundation. We've taken them to several local shelters. Um, the Doggy U Canine Academy, which is actually an agility training institution that's um, a couple of towns over from us. They let us let us come and see. Um, so again, making those phone calls and just kind of reaching out. And again, you'd be surprised. Um, people's passion for animals is is contagious and they, they do wanna kind of share that, especially with young people. Okay, so um, like Jane was talking about before, service learning is another tremendous tenant of Mud Degrees in the library, and we do a lot of it. Um, and the kids love it because it's creating things, it's making things, it's it's fun. And then they also get to, you know, see that those things are actually going somewhere. It's not something they're going to bring home and throw in their pile. It's something that's actually going to get used. Um, so on the left side, we have um, just a, it's just a little cat house. It's a cardboard box that the kids cut out. And this kid looks like he wrote, welcome to the cat cave, homies. Um, again, they have fun with it. On the right side, those are shrinky dink keychains that we made with um, actual pictures of the dogs from one of our local shelters. Um, so we just printed out the pictures, they colored it onto the shrinky dinks, and then we actually brought those down to Brookhaven Animal Shelter and they were given to the people that adopted those animals. Uh, a little bit more service learning on the left side, we have the, the dog biscuits, which is a wonderful, I think that was one of the first programs that we started with. Um, again, the kids love it. They get to dig in there and make a mess um, and make dog biscuits. There's tons of recipes out there for doing that. And then we bring those to a local shelter. Um, on the right side are no so uh, dog beds, which is another super easy one that we do quite a bit. All right, so this is our Muck Club. The Muck Club came about maybe a year or two after we started with all of our Muddigrees programming. Um, so it is a teen club. So kids in our district in sixth through 12th grade are able to join the club. Um, it's been going on for about seven years. As you can see, we have our own logo and t-shirts, which they get very excited about. Um, so the club meets monthly 
and we focus on service learning projects like some of the stuff that you just saw um, also have speakers come in we go off premise um, and we do offer our teens um, community service time in our school district they are required to have a certain number of community service hours to graduate um, so you know we at, at the library as a whole tries to offer a lot of opportunities for that so this the muck club is is one that they really enjoy um, so this is one of the projects that we do yearly. We make a calendar out of pictures of all the dogs that are at the Brookhaven Animal Shelter. That is our, um, we call it our adopted shelter because it's the one that is in our community. So we print out the pictures and we just provide scrapbook pages and stickers and things and the kids create a page for every month. And then we have that bound and we make about 50 or so copies and bring those down to the shelter so that they have them for, um, you know, they give them out with adoptions and they have them for the staff and they they absolutely love them. They look forward to it every year. And so do we. <laughs> um, a little more service learning. This is our Muck Club tie dyeing bandanas. Um, those are actually some of the bandanas that you saw in the picture at the uh, Mutts in a movie. So they'll tie dye them and then write on them, um, you know, adopt me. Um, I like big mutts and I cannot lie. Another one of my favorites. And um, you know, give them out to shelters um, and some of the other organizations that we work with. When they do adoption events, they put them on the dogs, and they're super cute. All right, yet more. I, I could go on forever with the service learning. I'm sorry. Um, on the top left, those are adopt me sleeves. So those are really just felt with puffy paint. They go on the uh, leashes at adoption events. On the bottom is a cat condo. We make a lot of those for the Kent Animal Shelter. Um, they have a, a ton of cats and they, they love those. So we make those pretty regularly. And then on our right, we have some more fur-tastic frames. Um, and over here is some of our Muck Club kids painting canvases. So they're again, just taking pictures of the animals and painting their likeness onto a canvas. Um, these animals are actually from the St. Francis Farm which is an animal sanctuary in South Carolina. So on the right side is Dexter and he's there with his portrait that was sent by one of the Mock Club kids. <laughs> We're really lucky. One of our, um, several of our staff members volunteer outside and do fostering. And there's a couple of organizations besides the one shelter that we work with a lot that we do things for. So um, that's how we have the connection with them. Um, but here's Brookhaven. So this is the shelter that we do most of our stuff for. We contact them regularly and say, what do you need? What can we do for you? You know, obviously things that are within our, our means. Um, on the left side is a visit to the shelter with a bunch of our kids um, and they're all holding goodie bags, which you can also see on the right side. Those are things that were gotten through donation drives, toys that they made um, so that when people adopt an animal, they're able to take a little goodie bag home with them. Um, here's a little bit more at Brookhaven. We do annual cleanups at the shelter as well. Um, I'm sure you've seen at any municipal shelter, they're pretty run down. They don't have the budget or the staff to kind of keep up the grounds. So um, twice a year we visit in the fall and the spring and we bring flowers, the kids bring rakes and gloves and we kind of just clean out the beds. We pick up the cigarette butts and the yucky garbage that people leave and just try to you know make it look pretty and inviting so that people you know want to come in and, and spend time that's one of our actually you can see everybody has masks on so that's uh, our most recent trip in the fall to the shelter um, and then we're also very lucky to have a dog park in our community um, it's relatively new and as soon as they opened it we we called the town right away because we wanted to be involved um, so we kind of went down and saw what we can do and we wound up getting just plain spackle buckets. The kids were able to mod podge and decorate those um, so that they can go inside the dog park to hold toys. We did some plantings and we also partnered with our um, teen advisory council from our library and we uh, built and installed a little free library that also lives at the dog park and um, the Muck Club kids go regularly and they replenish the books at the little free library. Um, okay, so here's where we get all these great things that you're like, why do they have all this stuff? Um, this is one of the, the best things that the kids do. They love it. Um, we do tons of donation drives. We go to Stop and Shop, Petco, 
um, pretty much wherever they will have us. And again, that's really just a matter of getting on the phone and saying, hey, can I bring my kids down on a Saturday? We'll hang out outside, we won't bother anybody. Um, and again, you'd be surprised how many people wanna buy things for animals. I mean, I know I'm guilty of it myself. I was walking into Stop and Shop and I there was a little Girl Scout, like, do you wanna buy? And I was like, nah, and she's like, stuff for animals? I'm like, yes, I will. <laughs> Um, so we really do very well at those and, um, you know, whatever we get from our donation drives, we give out at our pet fair and in our goodie bags and, you know, wherever we, we, whoever we're working with at that point. Um, okay, so mud degrees at home. When uh, North Shore rolled this out, we were, you know, right on board. I think it was around 2018. Um, so this was a little bit of a different approach because this was all activities that were happening in the home, um, you know, with the families, not so much things that we were facilitating in the library. Um, so how we went about that was we used our, um, uh, the suite that we used to track our summer reading, which is called Beanstack. Um, and on there, um, interested families are able to register for the Mudigrees in the Library program. And once they're registered, um, there are five learning tracks for them to complete within the club. And then they can come in um, and earn prizes for you know, doing all of those activities at home. So the basic, the five tenants um, are achieving awareness, finding feelings, encouraging empathy, cultivating cooperation and dealing with decisions. Um, so each of those virtual activities um, are things that they would complete at home and then they would just tick it off in the Beanstack system that they did it, and then they can come in and get a prize with us. So this was the kickoff to the Mud Agrees at Home event. We're very big fans of kicking things off around here, if you couldn't tell. Um, so our Mutt Club kids came down to volunteer and help. Um, it was actually during a Mutts in a Movie event that we did the kickoff. Um, and there's Akumi came down from North Shore. He brought some dogs and a bunch of activities. And we had quite a few families sign up for the Mud Agrees at Home event there. Um, I'm not sure if um, I put a link. I'm not sure if they'll be able to go in, but that that would go to our Beanstack. Um, so you can kind of see if, if you're not familiar with that and you anybody wants more information, you can contact me directly. I'll try to get you in there. So that is about it. Um, this last picture is just one of our Mutt Club um, partnering with some of our younger kids to again make our tie-dye bandanas, which we all love. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, again, this has been a, one of the best parts of my job as a librarian. Um, I feel very blessed to be able to combine work and such wonderful you know, animal time, it's, it's, a, it's been an amazing thing. Um, and I highly recommend, you know, doing these programs in your library. I'm Liz, I'm one of the children's librarians at the West Babylon Public Library. We got involved with Mudigrees around 2012. Um, we had someone come out and she talked about the curriculum and immediately we wanted to be involved. Um, we're huge animal lovers. We love everything and anything to do with animals. So we were quickly on board. Um, so we signed up and we were sent all of the promotional material. So we had the posters, we had bookmarks, uh, we were sent buddy and we put all that out. One of our, we really love to market and get everything out to the public that we can. So we put the posters up on the windows, on our doors. Um, we put the bookmarks out. And that's how we we draw the attention. And then we put little Buddy, our Buddy puppet. Tom, you can go to the next slide. <laughs> we put him on the desk and that was just an immediate, the kids just wanted to put their hands all over him. So they would pick him up and they would walk him around the room and that gauges the, the parent interest. So as soon as you have the attention of the kids, you have the attention of the parents. And we were able to talk a lot about that. Um, so, Tom, you can go to the next slide. <laughs> so those are our posters and that's the um, curriculum binder that we have. So again, we started off very slow because this was a big undertaking. And for our department, we don't have too many people, um, but we were still ready to go. So we started out small with, um, we put Buddy out and he was in his own little backpack, his own kit. So the kids were able to take that kit home and in that kit, there was a journal, the kids wrote notes, they drew pictures, 
they couldn't wait to tell us about his all the adventures with Buddy, as we called him. And this, that's one of our therapy dogs. So the next big thing we did was, it's called pause for reading. So exactly what Kristen was doing. So we were doing the same. So we had reached out to a few different therapy dog organizations. Um, and we bounced around for, for, for a few because there's a lot with availability and it was good for us to just see what else was out there. So we didn't want to limit ourselves to just one, just in case there was a scheduling issue. Um, we had a lot to choose from. So the dog in the picture right there, that's Hudson. So he is from Therapy Dogs of Long Island. And uh, prior to COVID, this was one of the main groups we were working with. So Pulse Reading is one of our most popular programs. We've been running it since probably since 2013. So the kids come in, they read for one 10 minute session. So we take a bunch of either picture books or beginning chapter books, all about dogs and animals. And we place them in our program room on our windowsill. So the kids have an opportunity to look around and see what they wanna read. They could bring a book from home or sometimes they would come in before the class and they would look around and see what book they wanted to read. Um, so before the kids would settle in, the dogs would just make their way around the library. They would see what was going on, smell the stacks. And of course the staff had to, we had to pet and snuggle. So it was just great. Um, and it was just, post reading is again, one of our most popular and it has such an impact because the kids are able to just sit with just the dog, would just lay on the floor and they would cuddle up and they would curl like a pillow and they would just read. And no one was judging them. No one was correcting their mistakes. No one was saying that you pronounced this wrong or, you know, this is a big run on sentence. They just, they had a ball and they loved it. And the parents were able to sit, we would take pictures and it was just very relaxing and very, just a very warm atmosphere for them. And we would get the same kids. We did it monthly and we were getting so popular. We had to actually introduce another therapy dog. So our two therapy dogs were actually neighbors on the same street. So, which got a little crazy because they already knew each other. So it was like a big puppy play date. Um, but again, but the kids loved it. And the, um, the handlers would sometimes, if the kids needed help, they would ask the handlers. So they were very comfortable, not only with, themselves reading, but also with the handler where they can ask questions and do this. Um, but that is still, again, one of our most popular programs. Um, we're starting again, we had to stop obviously because of COVID. So we tried to do something virtual with them, but it just didn't, it didn't work, um, which was fine. So we're actually starting back up again in June and we're doing it outside. We have a garden area. So we've got, um, benches and we've got flowers and it's just a beautiful atmosphere where the kids can sit and read with the dogs so it's we're going to start a little small so it's only going to be in an hour time block as opposed to our two hour time block because we have to socially distance and we have to you know take all the precautions but therapy dogs of the lion are still coming back and they're very excited and we haven't started registration but i'm sure it'll fill um and we market it well ahead of time so We've been getting calls and questions, which is really good. So that's one of our best. Oh, and then, okay, so here on the slide, when we, again, when we first started, that's our, on the bottom right, that's our pet wall of fame. So we asked staff to bring in pictures of their pets and we put up a whole big um, display and then we gradually put it out to patrons. So they love that. Um, on the left is the buddy uh, puppet kit. So he was in his little backpack back there. Um, he had some wear and tear, so we had to have a few different puppets and some backups, but whatever. They loved it. He went out. Um, and then we have a reading corner. So tucked in the back of the library, we have two comfortable chairs and we have a table and we put out all books about animal rescue, um, shelter pets, uh, therapy dogs and service dogs. And they were able to just sit in that corner and just read. They didn't have to read the books that we had out. They were able to read whatever they wanted. Um, we put out bookmarks and stickers and uh, coloring sheets as well for them. Okay, so, and then the big, big event to kick off was our very first pet adoption fair. So again, it took us, so we had that in October. We started planning maybe six months prior. So again, we wanted to start off small because we, this was our first time it, it's a huge undertaking. So we started out with just the one shelter, which is our local shelter, which is the town of Babylon. So at that time they were in their very small 
um, a very small facility, didn't have a lot of space, they had trouble with staffing. So pet fairs, were, that was their number one uh, outreach to get those animals out. And they would go to the local pet smarts and like Petco's. Um, but for us, they couldn't wait. So it was actually the weekend of Hurricane Sandy. It was that Saturday and we did great. We had, we marketed it well ahead of time. Um, so we had North Shore Animal League come down. They did a booth with everything. Um, and we had the town of Babylon come in. And we also, before we, for more publicity, we, I contacted our local radio station, which is um, BLI 106.1. So they read, they did a month before they did on air lives about, you know, come down to the fair at the library and, you know, adopt your next family member. So that was huge. Um, and they've been doing that for us ever since. They email us, they wanna know when the next fair is, they put it on their website, they put it in the studio, they give us on air time to, to market it. They've been great. And then they come down to the fair with their tent. They have um, the promotions department come out, they do giveaways, they have a lawn, an on air spot. They give us like a half hour and they, they talk to people and they do the raffle wheel and they give out t-shirts, it's crazy. Um, but they love it. So we had a few successes for our first adoption fair um, and we learned a lot and we were able to just grow. So our last pet fair was two years ago. And I think we had around 20 to 25 pet organizations come down. So we not only do shelters, we do, um, uh, oh my God, uh, uh, what? I forgot. <laughs> Long Island Pet Loss, ASBCA, ASBCA comes down. Um, we also have the rabbits, Long Island Rabbit Group, the Long Island um, Parrot Society. Um, and we also have the Girl Scout Troop. So we have our Girl Scout Troop come in. Girl Scouts runs our pet supply donations. So they put out boxes along the front and people just donate food, unopened cans of food, bags of food, treats, collars, you name it, we get it. And we also have bins for um, blankets and towels. And after all that, it's we divvy it up and we give everything out to all of the um, the shelters that attend. Um, we put out crafts, we have a face painter, we have the ice cream man come down. Uh, one year we had um, a hot dog vendor. So like I said, every year we learn and every year we get bigger and we, you know, we use the outside, the whole parking lot, well, uh, the whole parking lot. We use the parking lot by the fence. So the dogs have like a grassy area. Um, the vendors, the organizations bring tents. Um, it's just great. We use the inside area, which is both of our program rooms that are reserved for the cats because they're all, the cat rescue set up all their cages and the cats are able to be taken out of the carriers, but in the in the cages on the table. So the people can go up and they can have a meet and greet. Um, so that's, again, it's one of our, our most successful. And we have a lot of success stories. Um, the We also have our teen volunteers come down. You can go to the next slide. Oh, and that's, oh, that's the, um, the uh, adoption board from town of Babylon. So they also bring down more pets. Oh, those are more of our therapy dogs. Mm -hmm. That's Hudson. No, that's Lucy and Chewy. Chewy's a little one. Okay, so that's our pet fair, the donation table. That's all the supplies that were donated on the fair. And again, that gets bigger and bigger. We don't, sometimes you don't even know where to put it. And that's BLI. And we, the teen volunteers come in, they do all of the donations, they divvy everything out. We do homemade dog biscuits. Um, they, the teens are amazing. They really do, they help us a lot and they earn all the credits that they need. We do the homemade bandanas. We also do the shrinky dinks, um, the cat toys, the dog toys. Um, and we also just, we have also it's a pet board that we do. So we have all the animals for adoption. Well, not all of them, we have some that we highlight. So we change that out. So any animals that's available from either of our local organizations, we put up to advertise. And we've actually had some success stories and we write adopted on like a paw print on the door. Um, and last we do, it's called, we, we started doing this a couple of years ago. It's called Pawsome Adoption Tales. So we have a, um, a flyer that families can take home and they put a picture of their pet and they tell us where they adopted the pet from, why it's good to adopt and to rescue and not, you know, to go out and purchase a pet. 
and you know what's best about adopting and how they can help all the shelter pets and it's just it's it's one of our most popular as well and we also posted those on our wall in the children's room as well um so yeah so again we're still growing and we look forward to more collaboration with everybody and north shore animal league is always great so thank you if any questions you can always put it in the chat